Thanks for logging on to Wayne.com for another edition of Inside the Zone. We're talking Comets hockey with Blake Sebring, Comets beat writer from the new Sentinel. And Blake, um, not a great week of hockey. <laughs> uh, four goals in three games is probably the scariest number that comes out. Yeah. Uh, your take on the Comets week because... You drop a couple here at home, and you don't score too many goals. I hate to be negative, but that's the reality of the week, although they did end with a win, a shutout even, in Evansville. This was a treading water week. You know, I mean, they didn't move up. Luckily, they didn't move down, I mean, too much. They only lost a point, essentially. Um, they got lucky, and I think they got lucky, especially Wednesday night, because I think they kind of were a little bit cocky going into that game, maybe, and thinking they were on a roll, and they were going to just throw it out there and see what happens, and they were going to win, and... And boy, did Kalamazoo give them an uppercut. As far as the game against Kalamazoo goes, what did you see, aside from maybe the attitude or the team mentality going in, uh, that concerns you or something maybe that they they did that they righted throughout the rest of the weekend? Well, it, it almost doesn't matter in a way because it's like Kalamazoo does this to them every time, it seems mm-hmm. like. Here, home, especially. Yeah, Kalamazoo has them pegged and knows what they're going to do. And Kalamazoo makes the the uh, adjustments, and the comments don't seem to. Even if, even when Gary tells them, "I want you to do this and this," sometimes the guys seem to forget, and they do their own thing. And that's being turnover blue line goal. You know, I mean, it just seems to happen that way with them. One of the things we saw on Wednesday was uh, Jason Dale, who was originally placed on twenty one day IR, got activated a little earlier, I think, than many people yeah. thought. Uh, but unfortunately, it looked like re-injured the groin. Where is he physically, and what's the prognosis long-term? Because groin's one of those really weird yeah. injuries that, like a hamstring, well, you just don't know how it affects the And is it a groin, or is it a, a, a sports hernia? If it's a sports hernia, those things are a bear mm-hmm. to fix, because those require surgery. You know, I mean, what they tell you on injuries now, you just go with lower body or upper body, because they're going to lie. I mean, <laughs> they just are. I mean, that's just part of the game. So, but I mean, I haven't seen Jason. I haven't had a chance to talk to him yet. I'm, but I mean, it can't be good. That's three in a row. You know, I mean, that can't be good. The loss to Greenville, second home loss in a row last week, three to two. Obviously, uh, a closer game. Uh, what do you draw from that? I thought they played better. I mean, and I thought uh, Makarov did a better job of controlling his rebounds until the last one. But, you know, how many times this year, Glenn, have we seen two guys collide at the blue line and then gone for the breakaway? I mean, it just seems like they can't learn from that mistake every time, and it's just so frustrating. It's like, why is a winger pulling the puck into the center of the ice anyway? And, you know, it's just like they just keep making that same mistake, even though they're getting called on it and preached about it, and they just keep doing it. That's the most frustrating thing that I would see as a, you know, I mean, but... You know, overall, I thought they played much better. It was a much more physical game. Um, it's probably not as physical as some fans would like, but it was much more physical. It just, you know, they it was just a good game. Two good teams. After a rare Saturday night off during the season, they go down to Evansville, win 1-0. Uh, obviously, Chris gets the big goal. But Ben Meisner, another shutout, uh, reigning ECHL goalie of the week, 9-0. and I know. Away from home this season. But he's won 3-2 and two at home. How, how I don't know. It how do you have that dichotomy? I don't know, but but Makarov's got the same thing. He's nine and six on the road. He's like four, five, and four uh, at home. It doesn't make any sense. And the save percentages are way off too. Uh, Ben's like ninety five percent on the road, and he's like eighty eight percent at home. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. And they're facing fewer shots at home than they are on the road. It just is crazy. How do they? Obviously, whatever they're doing on the road is working. Yeah. How do they carry that back over to being successful at the Coliseum? I think you've got to get the guys to buy into the game plan again. You've got guys who are doing their own thing. Um, They just stick their head down and go, and it's like, well, yeah, why don't you just give it to them? You know, I mean, you're playing right into their, their system and what they want to do. Instead of just following the game plan and sticking to it, they're trying to be individuals versus a team. Four goals in three games. I'm mentioning it again because it's, it's really staggering, especially considering the type of all, offensive talent they've yeah. steadfastly brought in over the last month and a half. The Dale, uh, the Wallets, a lot of offensive talent. How concerning is that for you going forward? Oh, I think it should be very concerning for everyone. Um, and I look at it too, Glenn, in that, you know, he mixed up the lines on Friday, and then, you know, 
they mixed it up again. They mixed it up the week before. Some of it is you just got to wonder, can certain guys play with anybody else? Um, you know, I, I watched uh, Ouellette and Marino specifically this week, and they just kept getting in each other's way. And it's like, and, and I don't think either one of them is at fault. I just think they, they still have to get used to each other and what they're trying to do. It's like Marino is like a right wing who plays center. I mean, he's always coming to the middle. And if you're the center, you got to know to go to the outside then. But Ouellette is still trying to figure that out, and he's still trying to play center like he's supposed to. You know, it gets frustrating sometimes trying to adjust to individual tendencies that way. Also frustrating for Comets fans, and I imagine for the Comets themselves, especially the coaching staff with, with Gary, is the constant moving of players up and down to the AHL. Jordan no, South, not... you got to deal with it. Everybody yeah. has to deal with it in this league. But uh, Jordan has been... You know, one of the better defensemen for the comments this season, obviously, or as yeah. he would have gotten called Plays up. Plays really well at home, too. But how big of a hit is that for them? And then uh, Fleming, returning. I mean, it's, 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 just, it's just the business. I mean, that's the thing that Comets fans have to understand is if somebody calls tomorrow and says they want Brandon Marito, Chris Auger, and Scott Fleming, all three of them are gone, and there's nothing the Comets can do about it. They have... There's nothing. I mean, they, the other the AHL team doesn't even owe them a development fee, which is really stupid about this league. I mean, you're, you screwed up on scouting your own guys, and you don't want them, so you're going to take ours, but we don't get any development fee for doing that. That makes no sense to me. I mean, you're basically just giving your, your, your product away to the AHL for nothing. I'm glad that you mentioned that, and that's the way that you phrased it, because giving away your product for nothing... I was going to phrase it a lot harsher, uh, uh, but I decided, <laughs> we're on TV, I G like my job, I don't want to lose it. This is G-rated, and the FCC does hand out fines. Um, but the Orlando situation, you read interesting article this past week, that finally, we might be talking about a player, but there are some still some difficulties and hurdles to get <laughs> over, yeah. because you mentioned giving away, Mickey Lang is... Still playing great this season. Yeah, in this uh, era of telecommunication in every aspect, and he can't get a phone call back. I can't believe the league's let it go this long. That's what I'm surprised at. Um, I'm really surprised that the league has not stepped in. And just for the, it makes the league look bad. And I got to think, you know, if, if you're Orlando, who else is going to trade with you if they don't trust you? You know, I mean, how's that going to work? And Utah kind of feels like they're, from the article I gleaned, that Well, that was Utah, what David Franke said. He, Utah kind of feels like they're off the hook because Riker's right. no longer with them. But, I mean, Riker's with Orlando. Right. But that doesn't make sense. I mean, could they maybe get Cody Riker oh, back? Would no. that be like yeah. a full circle? Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think so. That you could trade the, goal, the leading scorer in the league for your own backup goalie. goalie? Yeah, yeah, that would be interesting. I mean, it's just kind of this, the, weird, the weirdness of, somebody called it the ever-changing hockey league. And that fits because it's go. constantly changing. I mean, you're always going through roster moves. At least it makes more sense than the acronym now that doesn't stand for anything. They're not yeah. the East Coast Hockey League anymore right. like we all thought. It just stands for ECHL. <laughs> I think -changing I, I've called better. it many times the East Corporate Hockey League because ah. it's not actually about the hockey. It's about the dollars. It's about um, the dollars. This week is because there's such a log jam from, like, teams three yeah. through ten in the standings. Um Every week is critical. This week, maybe more so because you have a chance to make up some ground, not only on Kalamazoo, but on the teams that are floating around where the Comets are in the standings. Comets currently seventh with 63 points. Uh, but really, there are 10 teams that have a chance to make the playoffs. Well, let's look at it this you, way. You've got if two you, games at KZU this week. If you have any hopes of actually winning the division, which would be just shocking, uh, you have to win these games. And, and more importantly, you have to keep Kalamazoo from gaining any points. Uh, you can't give lose and you can't win in shootouts or win in overtime. You got to win in regulation, and if you fall uh, eight points behind them by losing these two games, it's it's over. There's only uh, there'll be only 15 games left after this. You're done. Yeah, you know? I only know I know we've only got a month and a half, but how close at this point are you watching the scoreboard to a degree? Because the Comets do have like a game. They've played more than a lot of these teams. Like they've played a, a game more than Florida, they've played a game more than Evansville, and those are teams that are right around where they are in the standings. So, you know, they get 1.2 points. By the end of the season, everybody's played the same number of games. It's a big difference. Well, right here, Glenn, is where those 11 overtime shootout losses come in. Mm. I mean, you know, you get six of those points, you're in first place. You know, you win six of the, half of those games, you're in first place. You, as it is now, you're hanging on. 
You know, you could be first placed or last placed. It's just amazing how badly those games are hurting them. Do you expect... Uh, I want to phrase this correctly. How do you solve it? How do you solve it? You don't. You just keep playing. you got to... You know, it's, it's a cliche, but you really do have to go one game at a time. And I think that's what happened last Wednesday, is they thought, okay, we're just going to win this game. We're hot. We're going good. We just kicked Florida's butt. You know, you can't look at it that way. You have to go game by game, and you've got to make adjustments each game. Final question, what are you most looking forward to this week? Because, it's, it, you know, they've got all week to get right, be here back home, practice this week, and then go, it's only a short trip to Kalamazoo. So you've got, this is a week where you can really work on some Well, I'll tell you what I would do this week, and this is going to be totally off the wall. I would destroy the power play and start over. I would throw different guys out there. I would do different things. That way there's no scouting material for it. I mean, what have you got to lose? Nothing. You're awful on the power play. Just start it. I'd put Kenton Miller at center. You know, I mean, I'd, I'd try uh, John or Joe Hartman on the point. You know, I mean, you got nothing to lose. The guys that are there are not doing it, even though they have the stats. They're not doing it. You know, you have nothing to lose, so why not really shake things up and surprise everyone? So you're saying desperate times... De sure. Desperate measures. Definitely. Well, all What's right. What's crazy is that they're 9.9% at home and they're 163 on the road. Now, how does that make any sense? It, how does any of this make any would, sense? It would seem to make sense the other way around, but right. that is not the ever-changing hockey league. <laughs> uh, we're going to be talking about Comets Kalamazoo next week. Two games this weekend, big ones, as we mentioned, for the K's. On the road against uh, this guy named Colin Chalk, you may have heard yeah, of him. Yeah, he's, he's okay. And the K-Wings. We'll have to see how it all turns out. Until then, whatever happened to that guy? I don't know. I imagine his name will be in the rosters, in the rafters, I should say, Someday, at some yeah. point. But uh, Bush beat him to it. What are you going to do? All right, uh, that's Blake. I'm Glenn. We'll see you next week.